So let's again take a coordinate problem. I've got coordinates for ABC and DEF, and I want to find if these two angles A and D are congruent. Well, the path I'm going to take, of course, look for congruent triangles. You'll remember the distance formula looks like this, but I showed you before, there's a better way to use it. Let's, instead of X1s and X2s, honestly, it's going to take you all day. Why don't we call it this? That's not triangle, that's delta x squared and delta y, delta meaning change. So we'll take the change in x and the change in y, we'll square them, and you'll see how much more efficient this is. So let's move this off here. And now, let's start with a, b, and d, e. I can just look right at this, I can see 3 and 6, that has a difference of 3. 7 and 11 has a, dis a difference of 4. Down here on the other triangle, 2 and 5 has a difference of 3. Negative 4 and negative 8 has a difference of 4. So if you stick with this formula, just write the differences. Forget about all those x1s and x2s, y1s and y2s. Just think about what it really means. So now let's continue on here with BC. So we have to compare BC and EF. And you can see there I'm coming up with radical 29. Same thing. 6 and 6 and 11 has a difference of five, has a difference of 5 11 and 13 has a difference of 2 5 and 10 clearly a difference of 5 negative 8 negative 10 a difference of 2 again the direction doesn't matter we're going to square this change so it's always going to be positive and I'll let you do the next one yourselves and clearly C A and F D uh, square root of 100, we all know that's going to be 10 in the principal root. And our result, we can conclude, or we've just proven these two triangles are congruent by side, 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 since we have three pairs of congruent sides. And therefore, um, well, the triangles are congruent, and let's um, then conclude that all their corresponding parts, in this case, angle A, and angle D are congruent. And that's it. But we're going to look at this another way. Well, a brief word of caution about this exercise we just did. We proved that triangle ABC was congruent to triangle DEF, and therefore angles A and D are congruent. And that was pretty straightforward. However, if these two triangles, I'll say the red and the blue, were not congruent, we would also have to check this. What if triangle ABC was congruent to triangle DFE? Well, that would also result in angle A being congruent to angle D. So you would have to check that possibility as well. I would recommend at this point, in these type of problems, why don't you just graph it? And then it'll be obvious what you need to check. So by graphing, we see that we explored again, we proved that ABC it's congruent to triangle DEF. And just simply by looking at this picture, there's no way I would have to explore this possibility because AB is nothing like DF. So this possibility doesn't even exist. So we got it right the first time. Well, let's do this again. One more exercise involving the coordinate plane. This is number 22, the next one in your textbook. And again, we'll use our abbreviated distance formula here. We're we're saying delta x squared delta y squared for the change. Right away, I'm, I'm noticing something pretty unique here. I've got, okay, I've got a change in x of 0, change in y of 6. Over here on the blue triangle, I've got a change in x of 6, change in y of 0. And as you suspected, that's going to be a pretty simple distance formula. Really turns or simplifies to a singular dimension or number line. And I do the same thing for BC and EF. I've got the same segments and I could investigate the third side and I would end up again with a matching pair. So 6, 8, 10, 6, 8, 10, the sides all match. The triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Now if you were a crafty individual, you would have done this. You would have stopped right here. You would have noticed that you're dealing with in both cases, one horizontal, one vertical segment. Therefore, 
the angles between them, right angles, and the two triangles would be congruent by side angle side. And the third check would be unnecessary. So now let's just have a, well, let's then come to our conclusion. Angle A is congruent to angle D by virtue of the corresponding triangles. Now we're going to graph it. Well, here's a visual for exercise number 22. We've already got it figured out, but let's look at the picture. And again, that's the side, side, side that we've demonstrated with our distance formula. Or if you were really on the ball, you said, ha ha, right angles. So I don't have to check these two sides. I've got side, angle, side. And either way, you've got congruent triangles congruent. Once the triangles are congruent, then I know their corresponding parts are congruent.